that of course was just the beginning of Leonard. Um, this uh, is a story called How Dare the Bastard. There's a postal sorting office I pass regularly on my way home, outside of which stands a larger than usual Royal Mail post box. This particular box offers more pickups than usual, as well as a Sunday clearing, and this makes it popular with folk who are keen to have their correspondence dealt with quickly. One day, anxious to get a letter off, I pulled my car up next to the box, picked up the letter and turning off the engine, hopped out, foolishly leaving the key in the ignition. It took no more than ten or so seconds to post it, and as I turned back to my horror, I saw a biker in full black leather gear, complete with helmet and visor, opening the door of my car and about to get into the driving seat. Without thinking of, of the consequences, I ran towards the car and just managed to get a foot onto the ledge of the door when the bastard already in the driving seat turned the key. The engine started, and as he accelerated away, I found myself close by him, hanging onto the rim of the roof with my left hand, my left foot just inside the car, and clutching the half-open door behind me with my right hand, my right foot dragging along the tarmac as the car picked up speed. Now it's true, time slows down on such occasions, and while I yelled at the driver to stop, I wondered almost casually why on earth any of the oncoming traffic didn't do something to stop us. Why didn't they, for instance, immediately drive over the centre white line and pull across us? Uh, sorry, I'll read that bit again. Why didn't they, for instance, immediately drive over the centre white line and pull across the front of us like they do in action films? And presumably write off both cars like they do in action films. After speeding for a couple of blocks, the car jacker suddenly braked. Get out, he shouted. Well, instead of feeling relief and gratitude and taking advantage of his offer, I thought, how bloody dare the bastard? It is my bloody car. I stayed put, and he took off again, accelerating harder than before and weaving from side to side in an effort, I supposed, to throw me off my perch. Well, this only made me tighten my grip. By now, I was getting used to the ride. I looked up the road ahead and the rush of cold air was quite refreshing. Then I took a look at the man at the wheel. I noticed there was a gap in his visor where his eyes should have been. Could I poke my fingers through it and blind him? Logic told me that blinding a man who was driving at speed wouldn't be very sensible, so instead I resorted again to screaming. Help me! I shrieked to no one in particular. Help me! I won't tell you what happens next.